Okay. So a couple of things then. We know we know we have this local branching structure, right? That was this sort of observation. There's no clustering, and we of course think thinking about infinite random networks. And it's always almost everything with well, it's not true, but a lot of dynamic things certainly for networks. It's better to think about what happens with edges, sort of live in edge space. It's just you get a lot further. So very simple thing. If we think about something spreading, right, uh, and we infect this node, and it has Ebola, whatever it has, or um, believe something about um, a, you know, a political figure, then it's going to start spouting these things off this, to its friends. Um, and if it doesn't take, then they're not going to repeat it. right? So that's a very simple uh, mechanism. And so it's a uh, yeah, binary case. You're either infected or not. So, can global spreading occur from a single seed? This is a very fundamental question we want to ask this. And then you start thinking about, well, what if we had a group being infected or a distributed set of seeds? And, you know, you may be trying to change the world by educating people or making them buy your toothbrush that's made out of bamboo or something. You know, like, so, right, so good and bad situation here. Uh, and, uh, yeah, a lot of the work that's been done in Silicon Valley in the 2000s has been towards making you buy things and stay attached to things. So thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, the best of the generation has been working out how to sell ads. It's great. So this is a way that I like to frame it. It fits with a lot of different things, but I'll you know, have a particular notation. We had, uh, if you're in Pox, you know there's R0 is the reproduction number for, and you may be seeing it somewhere else, uh, for, for a the famous spreading models, SIR type models for, for diseases. So we're going to call this thing the gain ratio. It's going to be this R, average number of infected edges that one random infection, uh, infected edge begets. Right? Infected edge, it's going to hit someone. There's some disease spreading mechanism that takes place, you know, whether it takes or not. And then on average, there'll be, you do this over and over and again. All right, and then we'll have a couple of things. So, all right, well, let's just encode our mechanism with this probability, BK1. So it's this kind of one-off thing. It could be that there's an infected edge coming into a node. There's some clock, you know, and, and maybe what we think about is over, you know, a long period of time, what's the probability that this one gets infected because it's still being hammered. Or it could be just this one-shot thing. Whatever we want to do, we can collapse it down and say we've got this, uh, these quantities BK1. Uh, there's a reason for having a 1 here. So this means that one of your friends is infected. You've got K friends. One is infected. What's the probability you become infected? So these are vulnerable nodes um, if they're infected, right? These are the ones that are easily tipped. Um, yeah. So we'll just build out a simple story for this, and we'll get what I think is a much better uh, way of looking at these. This cast, this it's various names for it, right? The giant um, component condition, or a, if we think about a thing spreading, it's a cascade condition, a global spreading event condition. Whatever. Okay. So uh, we're actually going to go back to QK. QK was that sort of intermediate one, which is probably that we, if we run along an edge, we hit a node that has degree K, right? So it was. It was P, Q, and R. All right, but this is, this is a good, solid object derived from P sub K, right? K ways to get to a degree K node. Okay, <clears throat> and then this is the correct normalization. So this is the probability that you connect to a degree K node. This is the number of outgoing infected edges, if it's infected, and then this is the probability of infection. So we've got three components we can break it down into, right? So this is a... This is structural, right? It's random, but this is a structural uh, aspect. It's like, what's the probability that you hit a degree K node? Then this is completely structural. In that case, it will have K minus one new edges that it will be infected. And that's if this is true. Now, just to sort of complete everything, this is again, the probability that you hit that same uh, degree node. There'll be zero uh, outgoing ones uh, if it fails, right? We could easily have just sort of written this down. But this is just, this is now we've accounted for all possible things that happen. Okay. And zero has this nice property of multiplying things and making other things zero. So that always goes away. Okay. Good. Good. How do we feel about that? 
That means you can read off what's going on here. This is actually the same condition that we had before, right? We just want this thing to be greater than 1. It's what we had before, which was the second moment minus the first moment divided by the first moment, which was a bit of an obscure thing, my view. You can see this, so we could generalize from here, right? This could be a correlated network and all sorts of crazy things. So this, whatever needs to go in there, it could go in there. And then the, you could have uh, edges of different flavors. So we could talk about which ones are going out, right? It could be the ones that are green or the ones that are directed or whatever. They could be infected. You know, and this could be a much more elaborate thing. But we could just sort of expand these things and we'll always have these three pieces. In fact, that's something we've, we've done with papers, um, which is, you know, too much probably. But anyway, um, okay, I'll put these big fun dots in there just to show you there are these three pieces. Boom, 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 greater than one. So that retrieves our uh, thing, but it's better to just leave it in this case, right? So we could, as you saw, you know, rearrange all of this and end up with second moment is greater than two times the first moment. People do this all the time, but... And in fact, you get to that result if you've come from something more general. Maybe you're finding, you know, like a largest eigenvalue or something. Like you're doing some other kind of calculation. You've done something more sophisticated. And then you get to this condition, but you have no physical intuition for it. You have the math correct mathematical expression. All right. Exciting, right? Okay, I think it's good. Um, you know, it's good to understand things. So this tells the story, basically, as we, as we line it up. And we're always going to keep this uh, order and, and keep them separate. Okay, so rampant spreading would be everyone just gets hit, right? And this is the, actually just the condition for a giant component because um, we're not even thinking about a real spreading mechanism anymore. We're just going to, like, if you, if you sort of drip it in, uh, you know, add a, an infectious agent somewhere in the network and just, it just permeates everywhere like a liquid. Uh, and then we do that over and over again and we see if we have a giant component. Uh, so that's, this all collapses, right? We have a one here. And then we get back to, uh, this, so this is the giant component condition, I guess. Yeah, this was a slight generalization to have an infection probability in there. Okay, second moment minus the first moment divided by the first moment. Right, so there we go. So that's a good thing. Um, simple disease would be just as this kind of one-off probability. That's fine. You know, this is just a, a piece in here. Um, <coughs> so you can imagine... Uh, this is what's happening on this network, so it's just a fraction. We could actually beforehand just go to every edge and um, take them out with probability one minus beta. So that's a like a, an edge percolation, a, a bond percolation kind of thing, right? So percolation we talked about in Pox, right? And there's nice things, and usually in 2D we played around with that sort of thing. But of course, any lattice you want, any dimension you want, uh, and, and of course you can do it on networks. Uh, Okay, so the critical value gets increased, right? Because there are, the network has been pared down, so um, it had to be more connected to start with for, it to, for things to spread. Right, so we think of, beta, right, as beta goes to zero, you are you know, taking all the um, networks, uh, all the edges out. So uh, the chance of a giant component goes down unless it was super connected to start with. Say the right things. Bond percolation. And then if you want, you can figure out the degree distribution, right? So this is the underlying degree distribution. It's a nice little calculation to figure out that this is the, um, the resulting work. So because what can happen is if you have in this new, no, new uh, network, uh, a node with degree k could have been a node that had degree k, k plus 1, k plus 2, k plus, right? It had, could have had any higher degree, and it's lost the right number of friends, and that's what this is, the failures. Okay. How do we feel about that exciting thing? Anyway, this is, this is tidy. It has a physical story built into it. It's good. Good thing. All right. Proceed? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. 